Hello, this is David. Here's a classic idea in finance, time-weighted versus dollar-weighted returns. And I hope this illustrates how many different ways there are to look at just the idea of a return. And I've got hopefully a simple example here. Over a two-year period, a stock starts at $10. At the end of the first year, it increases to $12, but it also pays a $1 dividend. And at the end of the second year, it drops to $8 and also pays a $1 dividend. Now, if we're going to compute a simple return, we would typically do that by adding this $12 to the $1 dividend, subtracting the $10, and then using the $10 as a base, and we get a 30% simple annual return. Everything here is annual compound frequency. And you can just observe that 30% makes sense because we start at 10, there's a capital appreciation of $2 plus income or dividend of $1, that's $3. $3 is 30% of $10. And then in the second year, however, this stock drops by eight, so that's a loss of $4, offset by the $1 in income, so nets out to a loss of three, on the 12 is negative 25%. Hopefully that makes some intuitive sense. Well, the time-weighted return is a geometric average, is all that is, right? So we take one plus the simple return of 30% in the first year, and we chain them by multiplying them t together. So I'm only doing two years here, but I it can go on and on for as many sub-periods as we like. But you see, it's a multiplier. It's 1.3 multiplied by really 0 0.75. And in this case, because we have two periods, we're gonna take a square root and back out a one here and we get a time-weighted or geometric average of negative 1.26. And I'd just like to point out that this is different from an arithmetic average. It's another way to do it, and it's perfectly valid. If I just take the average of the simple returns in the series, you'll notice in this case, I get 2.50%. Notice how different they are. Admittedly, I designed this scenario to highlight the differences, but geometric average is negative, Arithmetic average is positive. No, no right or wrong here. There's pros and cons to those. So let's just look at the dollar weighted return. What does that mean? Well, we need to assume that there's some cash or wealth uh, pur purchases and sales going on. So I'm going to assume at the beginning that we purchase two shares. So that's two shares that cost us $10 per share or $20 cash outflow is why it's negative. And then at the end of the first year, that means we're collecting $2 in dividends, $2 times $1 per share dividend, and we just decide to sell one of the shares, um, maybe because the price increased. So that's a $12 cash inflow at the end of the first year, but we still have one more share. So at the end of the second year, we collect the dividend on that share, and then we decide to sell it at $8. And so this is really a cash flow series then, and this is what it looks like. We spend $20 to get two shares, and at the end of the first year, we get a dividend, plus we sell one share. At the end of the second year, we get a dividend, and we sell the final share. And so we have a net cash flow series, and the dollar-weighted return is really just the internal rate of return. So in Excel, I use the IRR function just for selecting the range because there's not an analytical solution to the IRR. There really needs to be an iterative solution. So calculator will do it, Excel will do it, but there isn't really an analytical formula to find it. But what does it mean? Well, we get a 10.66% here. What it means is if I discount all of the cash flows at the internal rate of return, the sum of those is zero. So in other words, here's the $20, it's the initial flow, so it discounts to itself. That at the end of the first year, the $14 is discounted at the 10.66 for one year. So it's reduced to a present value of 12.65, present value is time zero if you like. And the $9 is discounted also at the 10.66, but discounted at two years. So it's reduced even more, really, down to 7.35. So the IRR is the discount rate that we can use throughout the series. And if we sum the series here, we get zero. Another way to think about that then is that at time zero, $20 is what you spend 
and then what your the internal rate of return on what you're getting back is 10.66 and really notice again um, that's not only a good deal but how different it is from the time weighted or geometric average and that's largely because this dollar weighted return unlike the time weighted return that gives each sub period the same weight the dollar weighted return care really looks at how much wealth is invested each sub period so you're going to expect a very different result in this case we had we were invested in both shares in that first year when there was an increase in the stock price so there's a disproportionate weight here driving this up and really you know in a sense that that really mirrors reality you'd have the this is really the return that you're earning so there's a lot to be said for using the dollar weighted or internal rate of return this is david harper of the bionic turtle thank you very much